waste for a few more people. All right, um, I'll get started, I guess. Um, I don't think a lot more people are joining in. Unless, uh, Praveen, can, can, can you actually see uh, more people requesting? So it would show you on the participants list. Yeah, yeah, I don't see anyone requesting. I've added whoever has come immediately. Okay, okay, awesome. So um, I'll get started. So the um, so topic for today is um, VASM support in Go. Um, so VASM is WebAssembly, basically. Um, it allows you to... Um, um, I, I hope most of you are familiar with VASM, um, but for those who are not, I'll just give a brief primer on it. Uh, WebAssembly is the um, is a new standard which was introduced by pretty much all the major browsers, where it allows you to um, write uh, code in other languages, compile it down to VASM, which is WebAssembly, and then run it on um, the browser. So VASM gives you a stack-based virtual machine. Um, your VASM code is designed to be portable for high-level languages, as portable um, for high-level languages like C, C++, Rust, and also um, since Go 1.1, 1.11. It's, it has support for Go as well. Um, so it allows for deployment on the web for client and server applications. So you can run VASM on your Node.js app as well, as well as on your uh, browser. So um, without further ado, um, so let's, so, um, this is like the standard, um, so VASM group has created this uh, in browser um, ID. Um, it's sort of like a Visual Studio code or add them on the uh, browser. So you have this webassembly.studio. Let me just share it with everyone. Webassembly studio, where you can um, run your code. So I'm just um, creating a empty C project to see what Basim is about. Um, so I have this main.c. I hope my um, font is, yeah, Increase my font size. I hope now it's visible. So you have this um, C file, which kind of has this um, different attributes defined, VASM export defined, and um, int main defined. So this main function is similar to what we have seen in our, on all our C programs. The HTML file, all it does is it loads the main.js file, and um, the main.js file it pulls the out dot, uh, it, it fetches um, VASM file from the out directly, and then it um, passes it to the WebAssembly object to instantiate the WebAssembly code to run it. So let me build this project first. So once building is running, um, you get the main.vasm file out inside the out folder. So the form format is an editable bat file. Um, um, I don't WebAssembly text format. Um, so that's the format of this file. So it's a pretty much readable code. You can in fact edit this as well, like what you are running. 
and um, you can pretty much run the code on the wasm um, studio web assembly studio itself it would be nice if it's a interactive session if people actually talk about something like um, if they are able to get something um so all you are doing is uh, all that you are doing in this code um in the main.js is you are pulling that wasm file whatever um, response you get out of it as a byte and passing that byte as a to your web webassembly.instantiate so this webassembly is present in the browser it says so when i run the console i can see the webassembly object available to me so this is across browsers let me open up firefox as well um console and now you have so you'd have the same web assembly um object across different um different um the thing um browsers so you'd have the same thing available in safari as well um let me show that real quick where is the dev tools in safari no clue <laughs> not a safari user i i'll i'll google as well yeah okay so i'll skip safari i'm pretty sure safari also has web assembly um, support we we can actually test it by running the code um which which you'd see at the end of the um session so um what you see here is this web assembly um um so you have the documentation for this in mdn um so so it allows so the instantiate function takes in um a byte a buffer source and the input object or a buffer itself um, containing the binary code of the wasm module and it returns a promise uh, which contains the module itself and the instance of the web assembly code so um, i know i'm talking more about javascript than um, go right now bear with me for a while um, so you get the results dot instance out of it so you get the module and instance out of this um, so you're picking up the instance object from the javascript code and you are um, calling the main function which is exported out of this main.c so um basically you are running this main function as a export link i could write my own function um we don't have the string right you have a character buffer um char of not sure if this um code um this is valid c code or not someone could help me that would be nice just run it and see if it's valid c code yeah from my um js file now instead of calling me i can call um hello
so it's um so hello um gives out hello world but it's printing out 1024 right that's because of the um which i my run actually printing the same value uh, for some reason i'm not sure but hello um there is a way to um so basically whatever um, object you are getting out of um, from the process bounties from the program bounties from wasm into um, javascript they need to be type converted i'm quite sure how to do that um, all right but i'll jump to the go support of wasm um so um this is some code which i um, done earlier i'll just go back into um history rather i'll stay with master itself so most of the code for this one is in this um uh, wasm go sample um so i'll first show you the structure of the project how the uh, project is defined so you have the um uh, lib.wasm so you have okay so this project contains uh, main.c which is some c code which which is uh, which i have pulled from the um, web assembly studio example code itself um so it has this um, main function which returns 42 um then you have this uh, main.go file i'll come come back to this file in a while um and then you have two you, you actually have two go files one is main.go and one is server.go I'll first talk about server.go because um, that's kind of just a um, simple file server which um, serves the current HTTP current directory. That's all it does. So it uh, takes the um, current directory, uh, which is dot, which is represented by dot, and it serves it up. So server is something to serve all my um, wasm and my um, index dot so it serves my index dot html my wasm files and my uh, js files so um coming to main dot js So I'll first open up index dot html because I'm pretty sure um there's a go um instance over here somewhere. So that's coming from Basim exec. Um, so yeah, so the documentation let 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 me um open up the documentation for um goes um Basim support. So Go 1.11 added an experimental port to uh, WebAssembly. Um, the idea was when you have this um, code. So let me um, let me quickly um write this code so it it all it does is you have this um function main which does a fmt.println hello web assembly so if i compile this code now um not this one um sample.go 
I'll get a sample. Let me change the title. So my um, so my sample um, something went wrong. One sec. So I have uh, this code in my sample dot um, go, and um, to compile it into um, main dot. So I want to compile this um, sample into sample dot file. So to run that, I would have to pass the um, goose um, um, go os as JavaScript and the go arch as wasm go architecture as wasm. So this gives me a wasm file. Um, it's a binary file, mind you. Um, you can't really see it. Um, see what's inside that file right away. Um, my sample dot go got compiled into a wasm file instead of the standard go binary. So if I remove this um, go goes and um, go arch, I would get um, sample right. Um, and this is something which is executable by uh, my system. But my sample dot passim is not really executable by my system. It cannot execute this binary. So what can I do with this? Uh, so if I have to see if I'm importing some wasm file from somewhere, uh, one way would be to um, to import this wasm file into my um, WebAssembly Studio, and then I can click on it. So um, I can click on it to look at its underlying what uh, WebAssembly text format. So this is a language of its own. Um, it 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 does not look uh, much different than Clojure in the way that you have um, parentheses and all that. And its evaluation is some sort of um, it's not um, sorry. Its evaluation is not similar to uh, the way Clojure works. In the sense, you have this. Um, so um, this module has all these different lines, and this one particular line, line five, for um, the main dot c translates into um, this constant. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Yeah. Um, so no, I was saying um, hello because I was looking at the hello example. Sorry for that. Sorry about the confusion. Um, so um, for some reason, um, I'll debug this code later. Actually, I'll um, remove this and simplify our life. Like the main dot wasm now should show only 42. So it has only 42 now. So um, this is pretty much the main dot c code, a uh, main dot wasm code. So if you look at the um, wasm file which is generated by Go, it also looks something very similar. Um, of course, it's a lot more. Um, it has a lot more um, um, changes to it. Like you have the go runtime dot wasm exist exit and all these um, um, imports which are implicitly happening in your wasm file. Um, you can so the hello world is out here somewhere, and you can actually uh, modify it. Hey, you know, I had one question. Yep. Hey, uh, in, in the C example, you had to explicitly export uh, main, right? Right. Uh, but in the, in the Go example, it was it's lowercase main uh, as the name of the function, and you didn't have to export it. So, is there a way? Like, is is everything exported, or is there a way to hide certain functions? So, in Go, it's not getting exported as such. Um, basically, what's happening here? Okay, I'll show you um, 
the rest of the documentation first. So what they are suggesting to do is to load this vasmexec.js. What this vasmexec.js gives you, um, let me just run this command. So it copies, so um, go environment root actually has this um, vasm file. Um, So my um, Go version has these um, files inside MISC. Vasm. Vasm. And um, I'm picking that Vasm exec.js, which in turn, um, let me open it in VS Code. I, I thought it had um, some code to load that code um, main function. Um, so by default with Go, things are different. Um, not everything is exported by default. Um, in fact, in the example, I would show that if you have to run this code, you'd have to um, do the instantiate streaming by um, running fetch on this. And then you'd have to pass go.import object. So go dot import object would in turn um, with WebAssembly um, instantiate streaming the second parameter it would look at um, the module. Um, the second parameter was um, sorry. The second parameter in instantiate was the import object and object containing the values to be inputted into the newly created instance. So um, the import object is where everything would be written written in. So when once you run um, go dot run, is where you will get the result out. Oh, cool. Okay, so you run go dot run. It's it's almost equivalent of running go run. On a packet. On the command line. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yep. So that's what's happening over there. Um, so let me um, create this index file first. So now, if you look at this example, so I'm copying the example as is from the um, Go Web uh, WebAssembly documentation. So I'm just running this. Um, Server on port 8080, um, allowing it. And once I visit 8080, I think something else is running on 8080. Let me um, pick 9080. Oh, yeah, sorry. So um, the output is going to come in the console because. It's a FMT dot printing. Hmm. Okay, so it did not find main dot passing because um, the file has been denamed. Let me rename it in my JavaScript file. Um, Oh, I didn't um, add, oh, wait, code um, index.html. So here, instead of loading main.passm, I'm going to change it into sample.passm because that's the file which I have, which I've compiled it into. Um, I hope everyone's following this one. So now when I run, um, when I restart this, I should get the output out in my console. This is because my main.go file is doing a, um, my sample.go file is doing the fmt.println. So the equivalent um, JavaScript console is where it's going to write into. I hope till now everyone's um, following, everyone's um, clear with this. This is the basic example, right? This is what you have the basic example in WebAssembly. So now, um, what can you do more with this? So the same thing, you can do it on the server side as well. You can um, 
pick this and run it on the server side. So to do that, you have this one. Um, So um, the rest of the documentation talks about configuring for Node.js. Um, I'll let you explore the server side, um, running Vasm on the server side on your own. But um, I wanted to get into another um, deeper example. So um, let me reset the size a bit. So I was talk, um, talking about the sample code, which I um, which I presented earlier in another um, meetup. So this was um, Vasm Go sample where I have a much more involved sample in sample code in my uh, main.go. So first, let me um, show you what's inside my index.h. Let me just um, start my server first. And it's running on um, 8,000, 8, 8, sorry. And here I have this lame example where I'm um, where I can add numbers, where I can subtract them. Um, so it gets subtracted and written down, right? I hope the example is uh, visible now. So um, I have these two numbers, which I'm adding into um, input fields. I'm pressing on the add button to add them up, uh, subtract to subtract them up. And this random 42 is getting printed on the screen. So that's what's happening in this um, thing. Um, you have Basim exec, which would um, give out WebAssembly initialized, which is printing out this plug. That's all that's happening. So if you look at the um, index.html, um, it's pretty simple. You have this input. input. Um, so you have these two script files loaded. One is the Basim exec.js, which is coming from um, Go's uh, Go 11's misc directory. So it's coming from this path. Misc wasm wasm exec.js. So it's the inbuilt uh, wasm exec file. This is only required when you're working with um, Go. Mind you, it's not required when you're uh, working with any other language. Um, you have the main.js. Um, let me split this. So you have this main.js which gets loaded. And you have two input fields to take in values a button add and subtract uh, wired up where it calls add function. We haven't defined add function anywhere in our JavaScript. So we'll see how we have defined this add function, add and subtract function. And then we also have a um, result um, input text, input um, feed, and the div ID with container, div with ID container. So this file, uh, main.js, it first instantiates the Go um, module. And uh, for modern instance, it instantiates the streaming. So um, lib.vasm is my Go code. Um, so I have the setup.sh. So um, I'm compiling my main.go into lib.vasm. And after that, I'm building my server, server.go. So these are two separate files. Server.go just serves my static assets. And my main.go is where all the magic is, where all the logic is. So if you look carefully at the main function, it's a never, um, it's, a, it's a function which would never die because you have this channel which you're not passing anywhere and you're listening forever. It's akin to starting a weight group and thing dot uh, weight group and and you're just doing a wg dot weight forever. Try to set up and 
run my code again. It's um, still going to run. So um, just to show that I'm not cheating over here, let me recompile it. On the server again. So now in the console, you should see um, WebAssembly initialize, uh, which is getting printed from my um, fmt.println. So that's um, Hmm. I'm not sure which where this println is coming from. Add them. By the way, if I type some other um, stuff, it's kind of works with numbers. But what what happens if I type in some value, some string? Okay. Before I go into the edge cases, let me um, show you what happens if I um, don't let the main function run forever. So it registers the callback, but it would never um, run. Like it would not wait for um, things to run. Like the um, Go assembly initialize gets printed, but since the server is not running anymore, these functions calls will not work. So um, Go prog program has already ex exited. So you'd have to have your main um, Go routine to keep running for any of your um, um, web assembly code to run. So um, now I'm adding back the um, channel like channel example because I just like it. Um, it's more sussing than um, creating a weight group and then running it. Um, so okay, so what's happening inside my register callback function? So this is a function where I'm um, in the JS global um, namespace. I'm defining a new um, variable called add. And I'm attaching a new callback add to it. So add is a function which is inside my um, um, Go code. I'm just passing add into my um, callback. I'm attaching uh, my add in my Go code onto the add in the JavaScript TL. So now I can access this um, add function inside my um, console. So this is what it looks like. Um, so you have the function which which is actually a wrapper of um, which is a wrapper created by um, .js. This creates a wrapper on it um, on this code. So when I assign js um, dot global dot set add, it wraps up my add function, creates a callback. So that once it's pushed, it would assign the IDs and arguments to it and um, call the add function in my Go code. Similarly, you have the subtract um, um, code attached, getting attached, and the get keys attached. I'll show what's happening in the get keys function. Um, I'll show interesting state of the get keys function. So uh, first, let me talk about the add and subtract function. So if you look at the um, index.html, let me open this up on the um, right hand side. So if you look at the um, index.html, on the button click, it's um, add is getting um, strings passed to it, value one, value two, and result passed into it. So these values get converted into um, 
document so based on document id i'm fetching the string values inside those um, strings as part of those strings this is clear so uh, once i go get those values um, so it basically get it takes in a field field id which is a js value so anything which i'm getting um, which i'm passing on to this function from the javascript world would come in as a js dot value um, type and these uh, js dot value types they come from syscall js library so um, along with vasm support um, so for vasm support um, a new package was created a syscall js package which is still in experimental phase um, it's in, intended to work with the js uh, vasm architecture only so if you have compiled code your uh, vas code is still going to underline it saying that hey it cannot find um, it basically says build constraints excludes all go files in um, syscall js so um, build constraints we'll talk about build constraints constraints a bit later um, some other day uh -huh. so this um, syscall js provides me certain functions um, and certain types so type value is one of the ones which i'm using to get values from the javascript land onto my go land so um, with js value i could do um, so it has all these functions where i can get the value of as a string as a um, i could do a um, dot so i have this field value um, which i can convert it into string using the dot string method um, so it has a dot string method on it which returns which takes in a js value and returns back a um, built in string type to me so that's what um, field id dot string here hap does and using this um, js dot global call i'm getting the document and in the document i'm calling the get element by id function which is a javascript uh, built in function you would find this function across browsers get element by id so you don't have a dom um, hierarchy implementation Now, so it's part of the document. Um, that's why I was not able to um, get this. So document dot get element by ID. Um, once you pass in an element to it, once you pass in an um, ID to it, it gets you the DOM element itself. So it gets you the DOM element itself, and from this, you're doing a dot get of value. which returns you back the string. So dot get and dot uh, value are different. So I could also do something like the text. So I could do a call on um, dot in the text to um, call the um, underlying function. So um, JS, this is called JS package gives you a lot of different um, functions one of them is the um, get and the call functions as well um, so we saw the call function to get uh, to call the get element by id on the document object and uh, run the get function to get the actual value of the attribute on the element itself so you can do those things in um, in the go line and you get this integer value, convert it into a um, string and return that in integer back. So um, value one, value two, I'm getting as integers. So these types are integers. Hey Gaurav, uh, one question. Yep. Hey, uh, so in uh, line number 20, uh, mm -hmm. you have chained a bunch of calls. So there's js global dot get and then dot call dot set, right? 
and uh, call is actually returning uh, a type called value um, from the go docs so if yes. if uh, let's say get element by id fails does it still handle the whole function gracefully all right let's do that um, so instead of results let me uh, put a typo here i put result only on the subtract function um if i run this code now Uh, yeah, I don't have to um, restart my server or anything. I put the typo in the index.html. So now, if I um, do my add would run successfully. One second, huh? I seem to be seeing a glitch. Oh, okay. So I have to um, recompile it because of the. Um, I did. I did not compile after removing the channel, so that's what it was complaining about. Let me um, run this again. Yeah, it does not like this. Let me um, bring it back to what it was. Let's check out main dot go. Um, my main dot go only has this change. If I compile it again now, um, set up and then run the server. So my setup actually um, is doing a go build um so i'll show my setup file again so it does a um, go build on the main.go and then starts up my um, so it runs it compiles my server.go file also so now if i um, reload my code and um, my add should work my subtract on the other hand is going to say that Set is called on non object. How do we debug this? Um, um, so it shows that main dot set value had the problem. Um, it even shows me that the line number is the it would show me this if I click on it, it would show me this stack trace. Um, but it shows that, hey, um, when I was doing the set value from my subtract function from the, my uh, uh, main package, main packages um, subtract, which in turn called set value, that's where uh, things bombed. So it would just show you that. It's not going to um, gracefully handle that. I hope that answers your question, Kavi. Yeah, it does. Um, so um, I've covered the set value and um, add, add and subtract and the set values and um, get value functions. Um, I'll show you what's happening in my main.js now. So I have my lib.vasm uh, which is being imported. So lib.vasm is generated um, out of Go code. My main dot vasm is pulled as this from my um, um, WebAssembly Studio, so it's using it's using the main dot vasm, which is part of the uh, main dot c. So it, this main dot c uh, built this uh, main dot vasm, and this is the same vasm file which would um, be served to my index dot uh, main, uh, which is the same main dot Vasim, which my main.js is being is pulling. So it takes that array buffer and it instantiates and um, that results instance is writing into the container. So I have a, a wait over here and that's why that um, go.run is important. So that it can um, keep waiting for those um, to run.
I'll just go into the documentation of instantiate streaming. So there's also another way of doing this. I'll show you the other way, um, kind of something similar to what they are doing over here, Sunshade, um, and how we can do it that way. But the point which I was driving was um, my VASM files are, com are compiled from two different languages, my Go and uh, one from C um, code. And they both can run simultaneously side by side in my um, app. So this 42 is coming from my uh, main.vasm. So if I change um, my main.vasm, I should, uh, yeah. It... So I wouldn't be able to edit this um, search marketplace. I wonder if there's a um, vasm. Awesome. So there is, there seems to be a um, vacuum toolkit. Awesome. So it opened up my um, passive file, and now if I make a change directly onto it, uh, I can't seem to edit it on the browser, on uh, VS Code, but on the browser, I can actually edit that VASM and um, pull it out. So instead of 42, I can write um, 100. And this VASM file, I can um, download. I'm not restarting my server. Um, my file gets served again, my VASM file. Now you see 100 on my browser. It's basically my C code. So if you see the value is 100 now. So apart from running, um, why would you use something like VASM, right? That must be one question which would be running through your mind. So uh, if you are doing any sort of like crypto um, cryptography or um, anything related with high computation, you might want to push it into a language which actually does, um, which gives out better performance than JavaScript. That's one reason you'd want to go for VASM. The other is that um, Java, JavaScript has a lot of floating point operation errors. Um, so what, what do I mean by that? So when you add uh, one first, So yeah, so um, the example is actually, if you add 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 in um, JavaScript, yeah, this is what you get. So if you want to um, avoid all these bugs um, and be sane about um, what values you're going to get out of um, your program, then you can run numeric com computations in another language. You can push it off in another language like Go, C, Rust, or C++ for that matter. And then get those values back into um, JavaScript. So that's pretty much the primary use case of VASM. There was one, one other thing which I wanted to show you. Um, so I had, um, 
written another function called get keys i'm not wiring up wiring that up in my index.html rather i'm just going to call it from the console so get keys does a um, http dot get on a url gets the response back um reads the response and prints it out that's all it does so why get keys so um let's say i'm going to pass it my um um github url with the dot keys so that it can go into that github url and pull my keys when i try to do that um it says all goroutines are asleep basically it's not able to run this particular function for me so there is one other um, thing which i wanted to try here let me try that real quick sorry i'll um, quickly check the documentation on the difference between instantiate and instantiate streaming so it gives me a strange error where um Oh yeah, so um, actually my Vasm um, did not compile in the first place. Let me recompile it. Um, so I'm renaming. I'm creating two functions, both get keys, which So I had an issue in my wiring logic. Um, now, if I run this, so it says that that get keys is not defined. It should I even have got defined? Um,
um, I'm not able to make this work right now. Okay, let me do a, um, oh yeah, that's because there's no inst, inst there's just inst right here. Um, yeah, this should work now. Now, if I do a get keys, still does not work. Sorry about that. Um, So instantiate returns me a module object, right? So the module object has other pro properties. Um, sorry, a uh, instance has other properties. So um, it has everything which is exported out as um, available. So there's also a run function can find the documentation on the run function, which I want to um, look at. Okay, so uh, the basic thing was um, for running, so you aren't you aren't going to be able to run um, code which would um, require VM. Uh, sorry, which would require go routine. So you have the get keys function, which actually um, does a HTTP dot get um, HTTP dot get um, return Yep, so um, I was looking at the code of um, um, HTTP um, get. So this is the part where it actually runs it inside another go routine, if I remember correctly, the code. Um, this dot close body is now, um, if there's no URL, just close the request body. Else, um, this for each, um, it's going to yeah, it doesn't start up a go routine, right? Um, it should be get, but for some reason, it's not able to handle um, multiple a call which would um, end up being blocking. So for example, the get keys function does not get called up. So I'll have to actually look into this. Um, I thought it was because of the fact that um, the Go program actually exists. Yeah, because there's a select on it. So it, um, select and can receive does not work on this. And you're trying to um, 
do basically um basim does not support guru teams that was the thing which i was that was the point i was making um basim still does not uh, provide guru teams so they don't talk about it in the documentation i don't know why for what reason but that was pretty much what i had to share um the code is up on github so anything else that you would like to discuss nice talk man thanks uh thanks praveen i think you are the only one following it stop uh, sharing now anyone has any questions i guess no i guess you are done for today uh okay in case you do guy you do have questions please feel free to ask it on the go study group uh, uh india as a uh, channel on slack or you can also uh, open issues on uh, github.com/golangindia/study/group there is a repo by that name uh you can go there and uh, open issues as well in case you, you are not on slack or or comment on uh, the meetup page a- any place Right. Sure. Thanks for being. Thank you, guys. Thanks all. Bye, Goro. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.